Hey everyone, it's Sam with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to be going over hyperglycemic hyperosmolar non-ketotic syndrome, also called HHNS. Now this video is part of a review for the diabetic patient and I cover all the patho, the pharmacology of diabetes mellitus and uh, diabetic ketoacidosis as well. So if you want to check out those videos, a playlist should be popping up and you can access that. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down the patho for you about HHNS, go over the causes, the nursing intervention, and things you need to specifically know for your NCLEX exam and for your nursing lecture exam. Now, after you watch this video, be sure to go to my website and take the free quiz that will test your knowledge on HHNS. And also, be sure to check out the next video where I'm going to be comparing DKA versus HHNS because these two complications are similar and I want to highlight for you the things that you specifically need to know about their differences. So, let's get started. Let's begin by defining what HHNS is. It is a life-threatening complication of diabetes mellitus, just like DKA. Except with this, you have extreme hyperglycemia. In DKA, you have hyperglycemia, but it's not as ex extreme as it is in HHNS. These people's blood sugars can run greater than 600 milligrams per deci per deciliter. Sometimes they can run into the four digits, so they have very high glucose. And this causes the blood to be really concentrated. So they're going to have hyperosmolarity. So the name should help you out here. So you have hyperglycemia and you're going to have hyperosmolarity. Now in DKA, it was just variable osmolarity. That wasn't a big factor like how it is in this complication. And another key thing is that you don't have the breakdown of fat. So you're not going to see ketones. So big thing you're going to see is hyperglycemia and dehydration. And the dehydration is being caused by this hyperosmolarity. Now let's talk about the key players, the patho. What is going on in this patient? Okay, number one key player is glucose. Glucose, what is glucose? It's sugar. It's energy for your cell. It fuels your cell. Your cells love glucose and they need it to work. Here in HHNS, the body is resistant to using glucose through insulin. Insulin uses glucose by taking it into the cell. And insulin here is resistant. It's not doing its job by taking glucose in. So you just have all this glucose hanging out in the body. And this glucose becomes very concentrated. And um, you have hyperosmolarity going on because of this concentration. And whenever you have the hyperosmolarity, this causes water to be pulled out of those cells. So that cell shrivels up and becomes dehydrated. And it moves those electrolytes and glucose into the blood, which are going to get even higher glucose levels. Now insulin. Insulin, like I said, takes glucose into the cells and allows your body to use it. But here the cells are not receptive to insulin, but there is some insulin present. And that's why you're not going to see the breakdown of the fats because the body just has just enough where it doesn't have to turn to those fats and break those down and turn those into ketones. And also there could be limited amount of insulin in the body due to illness, limiting how much you have of that. Another thing is the kidneys. The kidneys play a role in this as well. Um, kidneys normally reabsorb glucose in the renal tubules, but here there is way too much glucose in the blood for the kidneys to be able to reabsorb it. So what happens is that it leaks into the urine. And when it leaks into the urine, it causes osmotic diuresis because the water's like, hey, according to osmosis, water likes to move wherever the most concentrated area is. So what's going to happen is you're going to pull all this extra water out. So you're going to see polyuria. You're also going to see more electrolytes being excreted, such as sodium, potassium, and chloride. And this is going to lead to dehydration. So let's do a recap. With HHNS, you have no keto ketosis or acidosis because there's just enough insulin in the body to prevent the body from breaking down fats. In DKA, you have that. Okay, also you're going to have heavy duty hyperglycemia. A little mnemonic to help you remember that. Remember HHNS, remember heavy duty hyperglycemia. It's super high. It's a lot higher in this condition than in DKA. And you're going to have dehydration because of that 
hyperosmolarity, causing all that osmotic diuresis to be happening, pulling water from the cells, it's just wreaking havoc on the body. And this is mainly seen in your type 2 diabetics. DKA is mainly seen in type 1. This is mainly seen in type 2. However, type 1 diabetics can experience this, but it's rare. Okay, let's talk about the causes. What causes this complication? The absolute main cause of why a patient will enter into this is usually some type of illness or infection, especially in your older adults. They're really susceptible to this. So an NCLEX question may throw all these options at you and say, which one is most susceptible to HHNS? And look for the patient that is, has an infection and is an older adult. And HHNS typically happens gradually over time. On the contrast, DKA happens suddenly. And you will have some warning signs with this. The patient, if they're monitoring their blood sugar, a lot of times they're not, but if they are, they will notice that their blood sugars are probably not even reading on the monitor. The monitor can't even read them, or they're greater than 600. They also will have frequent urination, polyuria, and they'll be drinking a lot, polydipsia. So what are the signs of HHNS? Well, how is this patient gonna to look to you as the nurse? What do you need to know? They're gonna have that heavy duty hyperglycemia. You're gonna go and check their blood sugar, maybe running four digits. I have seen that, or it may not even read on the glucometer and you have to get a blood draw. So that's a red flag. Um, they'll have polyuria. Again, this is because of such the high concentration of glucose in the blood whenever the kidneys go to reabsorb, they can't reabsorb all that. So you have osmotic diuresis that leaks glucose into the urine along with all those other electrolytes. So they're just putting out lots of fluid because of that. Um, polydipsia, they will try because they're frequently urinating, they're gonna be trying to drink to help combat that, but it just doesn't work. They're going to be majorly dehydrated and you're gonna see dry dry mucous membranes, fever, fatigue, and a big thing that you normally see, that you can see in this compared to DKA are those mental status changes that you can have confusion, it can progress to a coma and seizures. Now let's look at the nursing interventions. Okay, what is the goal? What are you gonna be doing for this patient with HHNS? Remember they have high blood sugars and they are super dehydrated. So our goal is to hydrate them, which is just as important because actually hydrating them with IV fluids is actually going to shift and make Make those flu make that blood sugar come down and we're going to be decreasing that blood sugar through insulin so um, you're going to be giving IV fluids whatever the doctor orders this treatment is usually similar to DKA um, so typically what started out is an isotonic solution 0.9% saline that'll go in replenish that vascular system which is depleted of fluid because they've been urinating it out. They may be progressed to half normal saline, which is a hypotonic solution because remember in this, the cells are just shriveled up and dehydrated. And hypotonic solutions go in and hydrate that cell. But when you give hypotonic solutions, you have to watch out for cerebral edema because you can overhydrate the cells. So watch out for that. Also 5% Dextrose half normal saline may be started when those sugars are running between 250 to 300. And this is just to help because you don't wanna drop that sugar too fast because normally you're giving these fluids along with insulin drip, an insulin drip. And if you drop the sugar too fast, the brain can't cope. You're gonna have that shifting um, of water into the spinal fluid, which is going to cause um, cerebral edema and increase intracranial pressure. So that's one of the reasons for that. Now with insulin, um, you'll be starting an insulin drip. Normally you'll be given a bolus and then starting a drip. And the only insulin you can give intravenously, remember this, this is very important, is regular insulin. And insulin, insulin causes potassium to move back into the cell. So you want to make sure before you start this insulin drip, the potassium level is greater than 3.3 because if you are moving all this potassium back into the cell, you're gonna drop the potassium levels in the blood and you're gonna have hypokalemia. So um, with insulin, you'll be giving a unit bolus, whatever the doctor orders, then you'll be starting an insulin drip and you'll titrate this drip based on glucose checks. And um, you will be in this room a lot, checking glucose levels continuously and titrating the drip and messing with the drip until you get a good glucose level. 
and then they'll be started back on um, sub-Q insulin or the oral medications, things like that. And other solutions they may be on is a potassium solution, which will again help just keep that potassium level nice and normal while you're giving insulin, since insulin will be moving the potassium back into the cell. But with potassium, you gotta watch out with phlebitis, which is irritation on the veins. Potassium is really hard on the veins. EKG changes, and make sure that their renal function is good because patients who have renal failure do not clear potassium, and it can, they can enter into hyperkalemia. And one thing you wanna keep in mind when administering insulin through um, IV, with tubing, whenever you go to prime the tubing, insulin absorbs into the plastic lining. So you'll probably wanna waste 50 cc's to 100 cc's, whatever your institution um, recommends before, after you prime that tubing, just to prevent the patient um, from losing that insulin that absorbed into the lining. So that is about HHNS syndrome. Now go take that quiz and see how well you grasp this material and be sure to check my, out my other video on DKA and then the other video about me comparing DKA and HHNS together. Thank you so much for watching and please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel.